So let me recap what we have uh, studied the last time. Uh, trust zone, and trust zone is creating two words. Uh, no more words. Two words, no more words, and secure words. Secure words. Uh, and how do you know which word uh, you are in? So that, uh, that can be checked by using uh, this system register, secure configuration register. There's a NSP, known security. This one is known secure, known secure word, no more like known NSP. So if the NSP, the NSP is one, then you are in normal mode, right? And NSB is zero, then you are in secure mode. It is that simple. But switching by uh, by uh, by programming this register to switch from secure to normal, that is not automatic. That is very brutal way. Right? So in secure world, you can you know directly go to uh, normal world by changing this NSB because you have all the power. Right? But that is too brutal. So ARM is not recommending, uh, uh, recommending that the method to switch the board. Instead, you have to go through. You have to go through a uh, gate that is called monitor mode. Monitor mode is the gate, right? You have to walk through this gate, walk through this gate to enter into the other one. From here, into here. So and you know, one more important thing is you, you try to think about you know application use case. Why do you want to use you know that uh, two two word? The thing is uh, you want to execute some security demanding security demanding applications in secure world. And so those applications you are fully trusting. You are fully tr trusting uh, those applications. Probably you wrote that code, or some group of people you trust uh, wrote that code. And in normal world, uh, you know you want to execute you know, some code which cannot be fully trusted. And Linux is you know one good example. So, so many people are involved in the Linux development, so you never know what's uh, inside the deep source code. Right? Some weak code, some vulnerable code, some malicious code could be inside the Linux source code. So you want to execute you know, that kind of software. Uh, the thing is, in normal world, you can fully, you can, you can have a full software stack from operating system to application software. Same thing works with your So as you look at this uh, PowerPoint, uh, each uh, world is providing almost all operating mode. Almost all operating mode. In normal world, you have almost everything. Not almost, we have everything, uh, including you know, the hypervisor mode, meaning you can support virtualization. And but in secure world, you know, almost everything is supported except you know, hypervisor. So you probably you know ARM architect. Uh, so virtualization is too much uh, to run in a secure world, right? Probably you don't want to run multiple operating systems in secure world. So that is the one. And one more important thing is uh, the last one. In monitor mode, I told you, NS bit is equal to one, you are in normal mode. NS bit is zero, is pure. In monitor mode, you could be either, NS bit could be either zero or one. But you are still in secure state. In secure, secure state. Uh, in normal world, you are in non secure state. You are in non secure state. But here you are in secure state, right? You are in secure state and you are in non secure state. In secure state, you can do, you have unlimited access to almost everything. Not almost everything, everything. You have unlimited access to everything. If you have enough privilege. 
what do you mean by that? Fluid is very different. PL0 and PL1. If you are in PL, if you have PL0 and PL1, then you have unlimited access to everything. You can access all the IO devices from, from memory. This, uh, but in the normal world, uh, you have some limitation. For example, you cannot, you cannot touch that NSC. You cannot touch, you cannot touch this the critical system register. So you have limited access to some other and uh, in hardware design, you can, you know, segregate, you know, IO devices into, right? for example, some timer, some private timer probably uh, uh, belongs to normal world. And here, probably you are, you are belongs to secure world. In secure world, you can access you are, of course, and also you can access your private timer, which belongs to the room. So secure world again, you can you have unlimited access to everything. All the IO devices. Some IO devices uh, belong to normal world and some IO devices belong to secure world, but in secure world you can access both. Secure IO devices and normal IO devices. Secure memory and normal memory, you can access everything in secure world. But in normal world, you have a limitation. You can access only normal memory and normal IO. Some IO devices belonging to normal. Some memory region belonging to normal. Right? You have limited access. Again, secure world, no unlimited access. That is important. Uh, now, you know, one uh, remaining uh, stuff we have to discuss is the you know, switch, right? This one, switching, switching between two words. I told you, uh, directly changing this NSP is not a point of this two words already. It probably can go from secure world to normal world by switching by updating you know, this, but uh, opposite, you cannot touch. Right? In normal world, you cannot touch this. You cannot directly enter into secure world by changing this NSP. It is not allowed. So uh, there are two options now. Two options you can do uh, switching. First one is using an instruction call, secure monitor call, SMC instruction. SMC, and second option is using interrupt, IRQ, FIQ, or above. So you can, you can use either of those. So let's talk first about SMC, okay. secure monitor call. So that is very similar. That is very similar to software interrupt instruction. Okay, so this one. So SMC instruction will take you to, if you execute SMC instruction here in normal world, that will take you to monitor. If you execute SMC in secure world, that also will take you to monitor. And there are three interrupt backup tables, I told you, right? Because we want to execute, we want to run our operating system. Right? So you need an interrupt backup table in normal world, and second interrupt the table is secure, and the last I will keep. So if you execute SMC instruction, that will take you to interrupt backup table. 
the monitor and offset zero D. If you remember uh, SVC instruction, software interrupt instruction, uh, software interrupt, right? Uh, that if you execute SVC instruction, then that will take you to offset A in your IDT. But you stay in the same world, right? You stay in the normal world. If you execute SVC, software uh, supervisor for instruction, software instruction here is secure world. And then you stay here, right? You stay in secure world. And then you execute uh, some branch instruction in offset A. So the same thing. Let me show you an example for it. So this is one. So we have three interrupt vector data. So this one is a secure world code. Okay, secure world code and normal world code and monitor world code. And there's vector table. Vector table is secure and this vector table, normal world, and vector table, and monitor. So you execute SMC instruction, and then it will take you to uh, this offset A from vector. Okay. Same thing goes to here. Okay. Normal world, right? You execute SMC, then it take you to that location. And while making that transition, this one transition, hardware, CPU will do that kind of operation. I think you have seen. That operation, let uh, me discuss interrupt. Let me show you. Put this side by side, then. Interrupt, right? Check out, check out, compare the operation. Uh, hardware is doing this, right? Uh, interrupt happens, then no, one, two, three, four, five. These operations will be performed by hardware. Right? There is a minimum, minimal amount, minimum operation CPU must do. Otherwise, you have some you know, functional power, practice power. That's why. Hardware is doing that kind of operation. The first operation, a current program status will be backed up to SKSR. Right? Of course, I mean, for example, interrupt happens, right? SPSR. You have, let's say, you know, IRQ or SPC. Uh, software interrupt, supervisor core instruction got executed. Then you have uh, saved. Uh, PSR register. Okay. And then uh, CPSR, current program, current program status will be saved in SPSR because you are going to update right, CPSR. CPSR will be changed. For example, more will be changed to supervise SPC. Right? And also CPSR, uh, in case of software interrupt, uh, I bit will be set to one, meaning that while you are processing uh, uh, ISR, ISR for interrupt service routine for SVC, you are not you are not taking uh, additional interrupt, right? IRQ interrupt, hardware interrupt. I, I bit is IRQ, right? it is masking uh, external interrupt. Right? CPU is taking IRQ, F5. Two external interrupt, hard interrupt. You are masking, it's not IRQ. So because you are you are going to update mode bit and uh, I bit, before that you have to update, right? So how do you read that operation? Then the link register, link register will contain the return location. Return location is the next instruction, right? You have some instruction string, then the location of let's say addition instruction is location. Next instruction, uh, location of next instruction will be saved in a uh, link register because it's a return point, right? You have to return. Right? Then uh, finally, program counter will be updated to three bar, start location of your vector table plus eight. 
that is happening that is happening you execute svc so what is happening if you execute the SMC? Very similar. Take a look at that the slide. So SPSR, I say it. Right? SPSR in monitor mode, right? That will have current program status register. For example, you execute SMC here. Then they will take you to monitor mode, right? In the current CPSR information. CPSR information will be stored in uh, SPSI. And mode CPSI, uh, mode bit will be changed to monitor. Monitor mode, right? let me show you. In case uh, you are not Still, you're not still familiar with that register map. So here, right? So you have a monitor mode, right? The monitor mode, you have uh, SPSR. SPSR. And link register and step one. Separately, you put the right? So that information. So monitor mode. Okay, then uh, you know mode bit will be changed to monitor mode. And then in case of SMC, CPSR, uh, I bit, F bit, A bit will be set to run. That means you are blocking everything. No more interrupt, fast interrupt, and the over. You are blocking everything. Okay. While you are processing. You are pressing SMC in monitor mode. You are blocking everything. And then, uh, link register LR in monitor mode will contain the return location. Let's say addition instruction is the next one. Right? Instruction state. And that location. That location will be saved in a link register in monitor mode. And finally, uh, program counter will be changed to MV bar. Start location of vector table. Right? Start location of this vector table. MV bar. MV bar. Start location plus A. Very similar. Very similar. The difference is you are blocking everything. You are blocking everything. Also, you are, you know, you are moving to the monitor. In the monitor mode, you have you know all the power. You have privilege level one. We go back to go back to here. So secure PL one, right? Secure PL one. Yeah, secure PL one. That means you can do anything. You can you can you can do anything you want, right? Unlimited access to system register, unlimited access to I/O devices. Unlimited access to any memory region. So you can do anything you want. Anything. Secure PL1. Okay, that is the one. And uh, so any, any questions so far? Yes. Link register. Uh, yes. So because uh, let's say, let's assume you executed SMC here, right? Then you are that will take you to monitor mode. So monitor mode is simply a key to enter into enter into you know, the other way, right? And you do whatever you have to do, and you are supposed to return that to monitor uh, the normal, right? So that is the return key. This is the return location. After, after doing some processing in secure, you're supposed to return that. Okay. Any other any other questions? So in monitor mode, you are supposed to do you know, two things. The first one, 
First one is the word switch. Word switch. From, from no more words, right? If you if you uh, come to if you get to monitor mode from mon uh, no more word, then uh, NS bit. NS bit initially uh, zero. Again, if you came from if you came from uh, if you came from no more word, then NS bit is still blank, even though you are in secure state, right? Monitor mode is secure state. Uh, so what you, have, what you have to do is you have to change as we do zero. That's what switching. What switching is that simple. And second thing is context switching. Context switching, right? So you store you store no more word uh, context to the step, and you pop you pop uh, you restore uh, secure word context from the. Step. So the key two things are typically you know, should be performed by software. Right? So let me show you the one example how uh, how that word switching and context switching is done. So this one is an example code, and it is assuming it is assuming this tag uh, memory. Uh, Status stack no organization. Let me prove that. Then example code, we assume uh, we assume this is stack. Uh, step four, secure word. Right? Step four, secure word. And then, this one. This one is step four, no more word. This is still you know, memory, the same memory. And this location. This location is pointing, let's say, uh, stack address is incrementing like this. So we are we are assuming full descending stack, full descending. Then stack is going downwards. Okay, it's down, downwards. And now let's say the stack is that, that is the stack status. And this memory location contains a stack pointer for uh, secure world stack. So initially it is pointing. Full descending on this pointing that location. Full descending, right? The stack pointer is pointing, is already occupied. That is full, full descending. Right? If you push, then that will be decremented. If you push more data, decremented. So this memory, uh, memory uh, location, okay? let's say secure stack, stack pointer, right? secure stack. This memory location contains a stack pointer for this secure node stack. And then, and this memory location, uh, non secure, non secure stack, stack pointer. That is pointing, that is pointing, let's say, stack status. Yes. Two thirds, two thirds. That is pointing the location like this. Okay. So assuming this stack organization, let's take a look at the example code. How uh, word switching and context switching can be done. Well, one thing you have to notice, uh, this is not complete uh, context switching code. I just want to give you some idea how context switching can be implemented, right? So, if you look at a uh, register map, uh, this register is shared between uh, you know, normal world and secure world, right? Normal world, it is fully using that you know, register, register file. And secure world, potentially, it is fully utilizing that 
to register file. Register file is shared, right? That means uh, in the context of switching, right? you have to you have to push everything. You have to push everything the step and pop everything, right? everything to that you know, that register file. Right? Potentially, right? So again, uh, the example code is not complete uh, code. Uh, I just want to give you some idea how how context switching can be done right? between between work, right? So with that said, I take a look at this example. Yeah. Uh, so I color code it because it really is really confusing. The first one, first first one is doing word switch. So take a look at this comment. This one is a word switch. Reading, uh, reading this SCR register. SCR. Then Google this NSC. If that is done, that is done in uh, the first part of the book. Right? MRC read that SCR. Then you do XOR operation with one. XOR operation with one. Then you are covering uh, NSK okay? and update. Then the second instruction is updating one. Test, TST instruction. That instruction is updating flex, NGCD, NGCD flex. Okay? It is checking the last bit, which means NSK. To figure out, uh, you are here, right? You are here. So monitor mode code. To figure out where you came from. You came from normal world or you came from secure world. They can be checked by looking at NSP. So you are testing. So NSP is NSP, right? Just for you for your information. Here SCR, uh, secure configuration register. The last one is NSP. Uh, last, you know, NSP. That is NSP. NS non secure bit. That is why we are doing. You are executing TST uh, test instruction uh, with one TST instruction. If you remember TST, that instruction doing R one, R zero, R zero, then R one. That instruction doing end operation. So R0 <coughs> and one. <coughs> end operation. So based on that output, you are updating then C C D. So assume that you are you came from normal world, then N is this one. That's this one. Then end operation, the one is one. Everything zero except the rest one. So if you came from a uh, non secure world, then that is that will be sequence output. That means uh, which flags will be set? Uh, we are interested in you know, zero flag because if you are looking at subsequent you know, next code, it is checking only zero flag EQ any e EQ any. So that uh, flag will be I think zero. So it is one. It's not zero. Right? Zero flag will be in zero. Zero flag will be zero. After executing, after executing TST instruction, zero flag will be zero. So you know that is important. TST, okay. the word switching, then the first part word switching, then you are updating uh, NGCD by testing uh, NSP, and then uh, code number three. That is a loading, loading that that stack pointer, stack pointer two. Okay, before that, before that. I forgot to mention the first code, and the, the last one. First code, we are assuming, uh, we are assuming, uh, we are assuming this. Uh, we are assuming normal world code is passing some argument, passing some argument to to secure. But think about your you know, function call. When you make a function call, you are passing some argument, right? The same thing, you are passing, you want to test some argument. And that argument, arguments are passed through, we are assuming, assuming 
argument drug test, a zero R drug to I zero. So here before SMC. For SMC, you are populating R02, R3 register to pass argument to in a secure way. For example, using this you know, uh, register, probably you want to you want to do this. R0, probably you are specifying some function you want to call here. So probably here secure way. I'm, I'm trying to give you some example. Secure way, there are three different applications. Probably banking application. First one. Second one, start uh, application. Third, uh, DRM, digital right management application. Which function you want to call? Probably you, you know, populate R01. That means you want to call the banking application. That's an example. Then, banking application, you want to, you know, pass some argument. Banking, you need to do some argument. So, using R1 to R3, you are passing actual argument to that function. So again, uh, using uh, R0 to R3, you want to test some argument to secure it. And uh, inside this function, inside this function, uh, you have to run some code. That is why you are pushing, you are backing up, backing up this R0 to R3. Don't be confused. This push operation is using what? Uh, monitor mode, stack pointer. Stack pointer in monitor mode. You are in here. There is a separate stack pointer. A little confused. Stack pointer here, and this stack pointer is you know for this stack. This stack pointer is for normal stack, right? Stack pointer in a monitor. Right? There are so many stacks, right? So, many. so you are pushing uh, this argument to the monitor mode stack, and at the end you are popping. You're pushing. And at the end, you are popping. And then you find that is cool. Because you push it on uh, this argument, you are free to use R0 to R3. Let's see. It's called one, two, three, four, five, four, five, four. Uh, you are free to use R0 to R3. So you back up. So that, that is why I don't get R0, R2, R1, R3. So that those registers are updated. Uh, so now you know code three. Code three is trying to load that stack pointer. That stack pointer two. Uh, so that stack pointer. Let me let me write down. So we are assuming we are assuming you are uh, you came to monitor mode from normal mode, right? So that means uh, you want to you want to push. You need to push the context. Normal context to the stack okay? and pop secure context, right? Restore secure context. That is that should be done in context of switching. So here uh, here uh, you are loading, you are loading L D R E Q L D R N E. Look at this first code, right? EQ and ME. That means one of these two. One of these two will be executed. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, because you update it at ECB and zero flag is zero, that means uh, that first instruction will not be executed, right? And second instruction will be executed. And E. Okay. Second instruction. That means you are loading, you are loading non secure. Are uh, loading this data. We are loading this data to R zero, R zero register. Loading this data, loading this step pointer to R zero register. Sorry, R zero the location, location, location of the location of the uh, step pointer. And then next instruction, L D R R two R zero. That instruction is actually loading this stack pointer to R two. Okay. 
Okay. And then uh, take a look at this. Uh, same uh, same sequence of the code, EQ and NE. So the first instruction will not be executed. EQ goes to zero flag. Zero flag is zero. The first instruction is not executed. Second one is executed. So LDR, NE, R1. Uh, that means uh, that location. This location uh, will be stored in R1. Okay. And next instruction, LDR, R3, R1. So this step pointer, step pointer will be loaded in R3 register. So you know, the, the, the result is R2. R2 contains a stack pointer, stack pointer uh, uh, from that uh, to the stack you are pushing context. You are pushing normal word context to that you know, stack. And R3 register as also stack pointer to there, to that stack, you are from there you are popping up. You are restoring. Right? So take a look at you know the code four. So you are doing push operation. Push operation because you need to store a uh, normal world context to the state. Right? So you use R2 register, it's store multiple. Store multiple instructions, right? R2, and the result is up. If you remember. Uh, you know, store multiple, load multiple discussion. There is a rule, row, row, high, high, right? row, row, high, high. So you are pushing R2 to R, R4 to R12, right? You are pushing R4 to R12 to, to normal world stack, right? That means R12 first, low, low, high, high, right? To R4, will be pushing. The step pointer is pointing that location, new location. Okay. And then uh, you need to store SPSR and also link register. So SPSR is stored to R4, 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 right? And store multiple instruction is storing uh, R4 and LR. That means what? That means uh, low, low, high, high, right? Low, low, high, high. Link, link register, link register first, then SPSR. Step pointer, it points the location. Okay, then, then the last instruction you are updating, and you are updating uh, R2, right? You are updating that location with that location with new step pointer, right? That step pointer, right? You're updating. So update, then there is pointer. Yes. And then pop operation. Pop operation operate, right? You assume the same organization, right? You assume R12 to R4, R4, LR, SP, SR. So assume that you know, status. Then you are popping up, right? So opposite operation. Uh, from R3, uh, uh, you know, these two, these two registers will be popped. Then the first one is updated to SPSR. Okay. And the remaining, remaining, uh, how many, eight or nine? Eight registers will be popped using LDR. Then you are finally updating that uh, step pointer, step point, point, the location. Uh, then you know a power operation, right? You uh, you back up here, then argument is popped. Then you return, return from instruction. So because you have now uh, in SPSR, right? So at the end, right, in this code, SPSR monitor mode, right? In this code, SPSR monitor mode is updated with that that information. This information. And link register, link register, LR monitor mode, start updating. And then you execute what? There is new mess. 
You are, you are in the Oh, any any question about this uh, context switching and word switching code? Yes. What right? about this So, is a, so this code, this code is executed in multiple. And we have a separate stack pointer in monitor mode, right? Here we have a separate stack pointer in monitor mode, right? And we assume stack pointer got initialized before you before you execute that push operation. Right? So in monitor mode, you are supposed to have separate stack, separate stack, right? You know, here, you know, in supervisor mode, you have separate stack. Abort mode, separate stack, right? You know, undefined mode, separate. IRQ, FIQ, same thing, right? Same thing. There are, there are many stacks, right? Okay, any other questions? Yes. Uh, R2, right? R2 register. So that register. This register, R2, right? R2 register contains stack pointer for normal order. Normal order stack. R2. R2 register, right? R2 register and R3. R2 register contains stack. Normal word stack. This one. Secure or the stack pointer after executing the code. If you assume, if you assume, uh, you came to monitor mode from from normal. Uh, no more the stack. You are pushing context, pushing context, uh, pushing no more word context because you came from here, came from here to push the context of your program to the stack. And we store, we store the context uh, in a secure way. That should be happening. So again, this is not complete uh, context switching code, right? Again, I want to give you some sense of how how context switching can be implemented. Uh, and you know, each word, each word is fully utilizing potential. Right? Each word is fully utilizing register file. Register file is shared, only one half of entity. So that entity is shared between normal world and secure world, right? So you have to fully, fully uh, back up everything, probably. You have everything, all the register to the stack to normal, uh, from normal world and restore all the register from, from the stack. That should be happening. So I feel like you know context switching is something like a little bit like an art, right? So you have to think about you have to design uh, you know software architecture how to do context switching. So you have to think very logically, otherwise you know, broke. Very easily broke. So there is an example of context switching. Then then before you show, before I uh, showing you a code, okay. A uh, second option you can do world switching that is done through IRQ, FIQ, or abort, right? And that is controlled by read. Uh, 
Uh, this system register is playing very important role uh, for because it is providing it is providing NSP. By looking at this, you know which word to write. Then one more important thing is uh, these three bits. Bit three, two, one. Those bits. Bit three, two, one. That is EA bit, FY2, IR2. So some explanation. Okay, so EA bit, right? If you set EA bit to one, that means uh, that means in normal world, you know, some abort, external abort happens, that will take you to one. But if you set if you set EA bit to zero, then uh, exception happens, external abort. It is, it is not going to take you to the multi mode. It is jumping to IBT in the current mode. You stay in the current mode. So if you set to one, one, one here, FIQ1, IRQ1. FIQ set to one, then fast interrupt happens, and that will take you to multi mode. Okay. Uh, IRQ bit is IRQ bit is set to set to one, and no more interrupt. Will take you to multi mode. So the same thing goes here, right? Uh, IRQ bit is one, and interrupt, no more interrupt happening inside the secure world. That will take you to multi mode. So these three bits are important: EA, FIQ, IRQ, and they can be touched. They can be only touched in secure world. You cannot change. Again, you have secure world, you have all the power, super power. But normal world, you have some limitation. You cannot touch those registers, those bits. That is obvious, right? So you're supposed to no, no more world, right? So with that said, some example, right? So IRQ, IRQ bit is zero. Then uh, interrupt happens, then that will take, you stay in the first world. IRQ, right? IRQ, IRQ is zero. Then you stay in the first world, and that will take you to the second world. It's a foreign world. Okay. But, you know, FIQ bit is one. Then fast interrupt happens, that will take you to one world. Okay. The same thing goes to secure. FIQ bit is zero. While, while you are executing some code, right? FIQ is zero. Then fast interrupt happens. Then what? What should happen? Interrupt. You stay in the current world. Right? It is not taking you to multi mode. You stay. You go to FIQ. Right? So another example. Uh, here we are assuming normal world IRQ bit is zero. IR qubit is zero, then uh, interrupt happens, then, then you stay in the current world. You execute the vector. But in secure world, uh, IR Q is one, then no more interrupt happens. That will take you to multi mode. The multi mode uses some context switching and world switching. Then But the little confusing thing is, little confusing thing is, uh, you know, IR happens, right? You are in secure world. No more interrupt happens. That will take you to multi mode. And uh, CPSR, right? CPSR is mode bit. will be multi mode. Even though IR happens. You came to you came to multi mode because of IRQ. Okay, so yeah. 
uh, you came to monitor mode because of the internet. But mode this, right? mode this is mode this. So since it's mode this, uh, you came to you came to monitor mode because of FI issue. But uh, CPSR mode this will say you are in monitor mode, not FI issue. So a little bit confusing. Okay, with that said, let me show you a uh, final demo. Okay. So demo is a little bit a uh, little bit complicated, but you know, I'll take a look at this execution workflow. So I assume it, uh, uh, we are booting. So it is you know, super simplified. It is also showing super simplified booting sequence. Booting sequence, right? Turn on Z code. You start from, you start from some code. Domain in secure That's booting sequence. Super simplified. And you do something? You, you do some system initialization, like interrupt, uh, interrupt control setup. Then using SMC instruction, you switch it to monitor. Okay, one. SMC, secure monitor code that will take you to the monitor. So you execute this code. This handler uh, doing what? You are doing, uh, you are simply switching. You are simply switching to, uh, you want to simply switch it to the normal world. But the problem is, uh, you never executed, you never executed this uh, normal world code because it's booting sequence. The code, the code got never executed. This is the first time you execute this normal setup. That's why we are doing this operation. This operation. You are storing this label, the location of the code you want to execute, the link register, then uh, SPSR. SPSR will be you know, set to this, this value. That means system. So after initializing, so in monitor mode, after initializing LR, this monitor mode, to no more CSD, no more setup. And then SPSR, monitor mode. That is one F, one system, right? Then you execute move SC instruction. PCLR. Okay. So it is like an exception return. You use that instruction when you return from. Return from interrupt or exception. Right? So that instruction is typically used when you return from interrupt or exception. Right? So we use that instruction uh, before before execute this instruction. You populate link register and SPSR with uh, the location and uh, operating mode because it, it is first time you execute this code. You never execute that code. Right? So it is like exception exception. So uh, you populate LR SPSR with corresponding information, and using uh, exception return move S, you are executing this, and world got switch. World switch. You are you are toggling S. So you go to normal world, and here you are setting up private time. Yeah. In normal world, we are going to set up private time. So every once in a while, interrupt will generate by executing this forever loop. Interrupt will generate. That interrupt will take you to this monitor. So we set uh, IRK, some, some register, SCR, SCR, IRK to normal. That means Interrupt generated that will take you to the monitor. So that is the signal. So a little bit confusing, right? So because it is a booting also booting sequence, but very simplified, overly simplified booting sequence. 
Uh, think about you know your desktop computer, go to smartphone, booting sequence is found on the computer, right? Smartphone, then some booting code supposed to be there. So from here, uh, SMC, then word switch, then uh, the code you want to execute in normal world, right? And then you execute exception return. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you the demo. Okay, this is the one. So here we have a secure world code, right? Secure world code, and at the end. Little bit lengthy code. You have SMC instruction. Right? SMC. Right? Uh, so let me first execute this code, right? You have SMC, then that will take you to that will take you to monitor mode. It's offset 0 8, right? SFC handler. Then you are simply turning on just for fun. Then uh, set link register SPSR with that information. Then exception return. Okay. And before exception return, you are doing word switching. Okay. Word switching, NSP toggling, right? Then this instruction will take you to what? No more word code. This, this no more word code, right? No more setup. Then here you are setting up a beta base register. You switch to, right? So you have. You have uh, V R register, vector base register here, right? You have V R register. Right? After you switch normal world, you can you can you can program R register. So that is why you know V bar is here. Then uh, starting pr uh, private timer, the usual sequence, right? We play with private timer before. Then uh, you are, you are, uh, you know, you keep executing this code, right? So comment it out, right? So you keep executing forever loop, no more, right? This loop. Then every once in a while, a uh, timer interrupt will be generated. Uh, that will take you to, that will take you to, hopefully this one, monitor mode, uh, one eight vector, okay. monitor mode. So let me uh, first execute the code and uh, talk a little bit more detail. Okay, so we'll talk, you know, detail uh, after uh, after showing you, you know, big picture first. So let's execute until until to this point. Okay, set up breakpoint and press F8. So F5. Okay, so SMC instruction in secure mode. Okay. How do you know you are in secure mode by looking at this register, right? By looking at uh, which register, SCR, that is, I think. Uh, oh, which one for that? World switching code. Monitor mode. Monitor mode. Okay, here, uh, uh, 15, four processor, 15. Uh, 15 and C1, this one. You have SCR, right? This SCR register. Uh, so, but two means what? 
two means one zero in binary. One zero, NS bit is zero. Last bit, NS, right? That means you are insecure. You are insecure. So here, you are insecure. Now let me press F5. That will take you to monitor mode, right? F5, this one. SMC handler in monitor mode, right? How do you know you are in monitor mode? By looking at PPSR. The mode bit, one six in hex. What is one six? Uh, monitor mode, right? One zero, one zero, one one zero. So one six, one six in hex. So you are in, in monitor mode, right? One six. Okay. So SMC handler right? five. Uh, don't worry about this for now. Uh, let me press F five. And turn on LED just for fun. Okay. Then uh, LR, link register, SPSR, you know, set up because we are calling that normal world function first time, right? So you are populating LR, okay, SPSR, SPSR, but SPSR, but LR, SPSR in monitor mode, right? So you need to check out this one monitor mode, okay, LR, SPSR. Let me press five, link register. Uh, probably that is the location, C60. That is the location of, of what? Of that code, this code. No more you know, setup, right? And uh, SPSR, we are setting up SPSR with one F. So that is easy, right? So five, right? One F. It got changed to one F, one F. Then world switching. So world switching. Uh, read a secure configuration register. Then you are doing all operation R four R four right and all operation to toggle NS bit right and store uh, SCR. So look at this SCR three. Three means one one. NSB is one, right? World got switched, right? To normal world. Then you are doing exception return, right? Move instruction, move S instruction, that will, right? So normal world call, normal world call. Uh, here you are setting up, you know, beta base register. And now private timer, right? Then timer count, right? What is timer initial? Initial value. Time initial value, uh, 1 million, right? 1 million, roughly. 1 million. So I don't want to type F5 1 million times. So let me press F8. Then interrupt will be generated while executing this while loop. Forever normal, forever normal. While executing this forever loop, interrupt will be generated. Then that will take you to uh, monitor mode, right? So why monitor mode? Because uh, SCR again, uh, SCR is not feasible, right? Because you are in normal mode, right? It's not feasible. But if you remember, SCR we got we changed SCR to three. Right? Three means last bit one one. That is NSB, and probably that is IRP. Let me check. Right, second, second bit, IRQ, IRQ bit. Okay. It's IRQ. IRQ bit is one. Then interrupt will take you to monitor mode, right? Okay, so let me press F8. I got a breakpoint set up, right? I think uh, here. I have a breakpoint set up here. Okay. Breakpoint, breakpoint. So let me press F. Right, so monitor mode, vector table, 
and stop at here, IR cube, one A. But you know, but be careful. Uh, if you check out this monitor mode, uh, CPSR, sorry, CPSR, even though interrupt, uh, you came here because of interrupt, uh, CPSR moni uh, mode bit is telling you you are in monitor mode. One thing, not IRQ mode. You are in monitor mode, then uh, it is simply doing you know standard procedure, right? Push, then acknowledge, and edit the toggle. Right? So let me do this. Interrupt, clear, right? and private timer status register. Touch that register, right? To inform, okay, I'm 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 done. Processing your request. So then end of interrupt in GIC, then return. You are returning to normal mode. We are not doing any context switching, right? Uh, you know, from normal world, what we do, what we have done is from normal world, interrupt to generate it, right? Then it takes you to monitor mode. In monitor mode, you are supposed to do context switching and world switching. But in this example code, you are not doing that. You are simply uh, toggling heading and returning. That is the problem. So then, you know, you are in a normal world, you know, interruptively continuously generated, right? So if I press F8, that will take again, take you to the monitor mode again, right? Then press F8. Right? So LED, let's check a look at LED, right? So monitor mode, uh, a vector, press F8, LED, interrupt, you know, generated, again, stop there, right? So same, F8, 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 and LED, got your toggle. So service routine is just totally LED. Okay, any any question about this big picture? And one thing, some some detail I need to you know, talk. So if you look at this code, the beginning of the code. So this code, right? This code, so it looks very, you know, strange. So it is touching some rock register, rock and on rock register. The purpose is depending on the product, depending on you know, device, the hardware component, uh, it is providing some protection mechanism. Because you are touching there, you are touching very sensitive, very sensitive register. For example, you know, this trust zone related register. Using that register, you want to do, you know, you want to do world setting, for example, in memory. Zinc is providing uh, that capability. A capability, trust zone setting capability, depending on uh, your I.O. and memory region. You can do this. Some I.O. device, private timer, that belongs to normal world. Some IO device that belongs to secure. You can do that, do that kind of setting. And memory region too. Memory, you know, main memory uh, is logically divided into 64 megabyte you know, chunk. For each region, you can set, you can do all the setting. That memory is for secure world. This memory, 64 megabyte, that is for normal world access only, normal world access. And next to 64 megabyte, you can do the secure world, right? You can do this. So that kind of setting is very sensitive information. Right? If you touch, if you touch that register, trust zone, trust zone EDR, EDR register, man, the register by mistake, then probably that is the security port you are reaching, right? That is opening some security, you know, some opening some door to door for you know, malicious people. Right? So, you know, very sensitive information. So, uh, just to prevent, uh, uh, prevent touching the register by mistake, uh, it is pro providing some protection mechanism. Right? So before, 
before you touch the register, you have to make sure you unlock. 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 Then you are free to access uh, trust zone related register. After, uh, after you know setting up, after doing all the setting, then you have to make sure you are locking. Unlock and lock. Then mechanism. So you know some protection mechanism. So this one to unlock. Okay, you have to use that magic key, D F zero D, and uh, then you are free to update the register. Then after that, you have to make sure you have to lock. There is a magic key seven six seven B. How do you know that magic key? Simple. Read that you know, TRM technical reference manual. Let me show you. Uh, Jink, uh, this device, right? Jink uh, data sheet, TRM. So system, uh, system SLCI, system level, uh, system level control register, unlock. Search, search, like this one, this register. So system level control register, that is very sensitive. It contains very sensitive information. So before you update those registers, you have to make sure you are unlocked. Then update, then lock, right? So check out this, unlock. Okay, so unlock. There is a magic key, so unlock key. You have to use this unlock, right? Zero F, zero D, okay? Write this value to that, to that location, to that location. Then you are unlocking. You are free to change that system register, okay? Then after that, this, look at this, lock, lock, right? There is magic key, seven, six, seven B. After change, updating everything, you have to make sure lock. Right? So nobody cannot change that uh, those trust zone related registers. So that is the first part, okay, this part. Then, okay, so lock. I, I just want to make sure you know, it is really locked, right? It is a status register. And then user stack pointer setup, right? Change uh, operating mode and R13, 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 right? User SP setup. Then V bar setup in secure mode, right? You are in secure mode, vector base register setup. Then MV bar setup, monitor mode, vector table setup. Then we are not using MMU here, memory management unit. Then this one is all. This one is also security uh, trust zone related register. So using using this non secure access register, you can do world configuration for I/O devices. So private timer, like for example, private timer that belongs to normal world or secure world. You can do kind of setting. You can do that kind of setting. Uh, then uh, SCR. Okay, set up because you know this one second bit IRQ interrupt, right? This one SCR, right? That bit I said to one because interrupt. Uh, I, I like interrupt, uh, take you to the monitor mode. That is why I set up set this bit to one four zero one zero. Then user, uh, user, uh, GIC, uh, set up interrupt controller set up. Then you know secure mode. Okay, uh, that uh, I think that is uh, everything. <laughs> everything for this semester. Uh, any final questions, comments?
Okay, to recap what uh, we have studied this semester, we have studied you know fundamentals of computer system design with ARM system as an example. It is good to know ARM because you know ARM is versatile. Everyone, almost everyone is using you know, ARM. If you go to Samsung, LG, Hynix, you know, Intel, Qualcomm, you go everywhere, right? ARM is so popular. Good to know ARM system. And to build a computer system, uh, uh, you know, hardware and software, we mostly uh, touch it software side from uh, basic assembly, basic instructions to uh, IO devices and interaction between CPU and IO through interrupt and exception mechanism, then virtual memory support, then final interruption. So that is, uh, you know, the fundamentals probably. And uh, those topics, those, the things you have learned will be you know, super great ingredient uh, uh, for your uh, for your test. Whatever you do uh, afterwards, very good. And if you are interested in computer system, computer system design, right, like operating system and formula design, and some your security stuff, then uh, you must you must know. Okay, any, any, you know, any uh, question, comment, feedback, speculation? Okay, okay, thank you, thanks, thanks for taking uh, this class, and I'll see you on uh, exam day. Okay, thanks.